This is a thermoelectric module. One of the things it can do is generate electricity from heat. These are grills that generate a lot of heat. But this one has to be plugged in to work. I want to know, does it generate enough heat that we can make enough electricity that it can effectively power itself. Switching to thermal imaging reveals the hottest surfaces of the grill and shows they get up to full temperature in less than 10 minutes. Of course, that heat comes from burning pellets of compressed wood fed by an auger onto an electric heating element. The element ignites the pellets, then quickly shuts off, while a fan provides fresh oxygen to keep them burning. I was worried the heater would consume something close to 1,000 watts, but the power draw shows it's only 200 and once the grill is up to temp, it drops to less than 10 watts with occasional peaks of only 30 watts. This might actually work. Armed with that knowledge, I ordered a whole pack of thermoelectric modules. There's already a lot of content on how they work, so I'll just highlight that they're reversible, meaning a temperature differential can be used to make electricity, or electricity can be used to make a temperature differential. Look, even the warmth of my hand is enough to hey, register on my go. voltmeter. And if you've seen a 12 volt cooler for under hundred bucks that also works as a warmer, it's probably built on at least one of these. One tip I learned in this project is if you want one for cooling, it's best to get a TEC model, whereas I got the TEG model for generating electricity. Apparently they're intended for higher temperature differentials. A CAD model of my grill would really help with mounting options, but that could take hours with a tape measure and sketch pad. Instead, I'm 3D scanning the whole thing. But structured light scanners don't work well on black or shiny objects. I've used pastry flour in the past to lighten things up, but that didn't stick at all to my grill. So I'm coating it with a special spray that's supposed to sublimate into a gas after a day or so. I'm also doing the scan at night so sunlight doesn't interfere. On large flat surfaces like these, it's recommended to use little locator stickers, but the scanner is so easy to use, I'm just winging it without them and having pretty good luck. In order to get usable power out of these things with as low a temperature as possible, I'm soldering them all together in series. I cook low and slow at around 200 degrees Fahrenheit and already have the grill up to temp cooking what I expect will be a delicious dinner. Since the grill is all steel construction, the magnetic bases from my mill and lathe work great as a temporary attachment method for testing. But even though each module has a spring pressing it against the hot outer surface of the grill, all six modules together aren't enough to light up even a single LED. Do I have the polarity right? But I know the voltage needs to be over two volts before an LED will light, and the voltmeter shows we're just not there yet. On a hunch, I grab my air compressor and start sending air across the heat sinks. Hey! Looks like we have our answer. So here's the problem. These things operate on what we call the Seebeck effect, which basically says that electrons will follow the flow of heat. The problem is, not long after you attach these things to a hot grill, the heatsink side, that's supposed to be the cool side, is hot to the touch. So you've got hot on one side and not quite as hot on the other. You're not going to get a lot of flow of heat unless there's some way for that heat to dissipate off of the heatsink. Hence why when I grabbed the air compressor and started blowing air across it, all of a sudden the LED lit up. But that's not going to work if you know we're trying to get this grill to power itself and if I have to sit there with an air compressor the whole time that's tied to the grid, then uh, that, that's, that's just not going to work. So we got to try something else. Something that's popular in homes heated with wood stoves are these little fans that appear to run on nothing. But if you look closely, you'll see one of these thermoelectric modules at the core. I've decided to get one, mount it to my grill, and take measurements to see if it works any better than what I've been doing. I don't want to cover my grill with giant heat sinks, but if that's what it takes to make this work, I'll do it. Okay, with the thermal grease, 220 milliamps, 0.35 volts, that's an improvement. Okay, it's the next day. We are getting record voltage off of this thing. It's late in the evening, so it's cooler. And I'm getting well over half a volt. I had it up to 0.57 here a bit ago. And let's see, no current right now. So this is just the open circuit voltage. You can see it's going to be 0.57 here in a second. Hey, there it is. 
Okay, so so pretty good. Just uh, no fan on there. I am going to pull some current on this thing now that I have a meter that I trust. Obviously, the voltage is going to drop way down. Uh, a couple hundred milliamps. I'm sorry, no, that's millivolts. A couple hundred millivolts. And uh, 73. So we are talking essentially no power at all. <laughs> Enough to run a little fan, which is all it's for. I'm going to turn up the heat. We're going to go up to like 400 and we're just going to see what we can get out of this thing, even though I usually run it at 200. Okay, the heat is up to 400. If you can see that, 400 degrees. And uh, I've even got it shorted through the meter and we're still over half a volt and 180 milliamps so we are coming up on 0.1 a, t a tenth of a watt <laughs> coming out of a single one of these things uh, thermoelectric unit so uh, I don't generally cook at at 400 uh, that's a good temperature for steaks but uh, okay that is boy that temperature differential, go figure. That really makes a difference. All right, I cheated. I put some ice on the uh, the cool side, and we're up to 330 milliamps, 0.333 amps. And uh, oh, we were over half a volt there for a bit. I guess it's uh, anyway 420. So we're, we're doing good. We're well over a tenth of a watt. And, uh, but yeah, obviously it's cheating. Just hitting the temperature differential. Um, in addition to it's in the evening and it's getting down to 70 something, 75 degrees outside and maxing out the temperature 400, 400 degrees on that. So as you'd expect, the temperature differential drives a lot more power. Ever since I heard about these thermoelectric modules, I have wanted to try to attach them to some kind of heat source and just see how much electricity I can harvest from it. Plus, I was hoping that with this project I'd be able to come up with some kind of a kit that anybody with one of these grills would be able to use to be able to run their grill when the power's out. But it's just not gonna work. Even with the grill run up to a super high temperature, and if it were super cold outside, it might be just barely enough power with over a hundred of these things tied to the outside of the grill. And then with giant heat sinks to be able to pull that heat away and get the electricity working. Since that's not going to work, that's not going to be practical, this just doesn't make sense to try to go further and spend $500 to $1,000 forcing this impractical solution to work. But fortunately, I've got a better idea. I hate to get rid of anything, so I still have an inverter I bought 20 years ago. I also still have the old lead acid battery left over from upgrading my trailer. Combining the two should be able to run the grill for days. But even after an overnight charge, the battery is so worn out it won't even let the inverter power up with no load. Typically, when I do a low temp reverse sear on steaks, the grill only uses 0.06 kilowatt hour. Dividing that by 12 volts comes to 0.005 kiloamp hour or 5 amp hours. But a 9 amp hour battery is only a few bucks more, which should cover me in case my inverter is horribly inefficient or I need to do an all day smoke. And sure enough, simply connecting the inverter to this tiny battery is plenty to start the grill and smoke these steaks over an hour at low temp, getting them ready to sear that crispy outer layer layer on my gas grill. And if all I cared about was power outages, I could connect a battery tender to the battery and never worry about an interruption on my smoker. But we can do better. I've got old solar panels tucked away here and there, but in my last video I let the smoke out of the one solar charge controller I had left. Fortunately my dad left a couple of solar kits he bought years ago for emergency use and never took them out of the box. So I'm grabbing one and making a father-son project out of it with my son, seeing if it actually works. 
These panels are so heavy, I think they'll be fine just resting on the relatively flat roof of the patio. Realistically, just one of these 25 watt panels should be enough, but cloudy winter weather will drop solar output to a third or less of summer levels. But going overboard with 100 watts of panels and 9 amp hours of battery, my grill should be able to run regardless of what the grid is doing. If you're wondering how I got that thermal footage at the beginning, I once again leveraged the Morocco 3D scanner from RevoPoint. My little handheld thermal can't record video, so I scanned both it and my phone, then brought them into CAD. That let me design a holder I could 3D print on my new Form 4 printer from Formlabs. The Tough 2000 resin made a part that fit both phone and thermal perfectly the first time. By the way, a small solar project like this is a great way to get some experience using solar energy. When you're looking at an installation of a bunch of panels on a rooftop, you're talking about permits and electricians and thousands and thousands of dollars, it's a huge commitment. But something like this is like two or three hundred bucks and you get to power a grill or some garden lights or whatever you want. I was shocked how simple and easy a system like this can be, just like how simple and easy education can be when you sign up with Brilliant, an online learning platform that helps you learn interactively. One thing that keeps me coming back to Brilliant is programming. I've done very little coding professionally, so I'm glad I have Brilliant to help learn essential coding elements, from loops and variables to nesting and conditionals. It's like it develops your mind to think like a programmer, building a strong foundation and writing robust programs. I also use it to get familiar with Python and start building programs on day one with a built-in drag and drop editor. I'm excited to try Python on a future project and Brilliant is helping prepare me with real world applications. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash quintbuilds or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video and thank you for considering Brilliant. So what do I think of this setup? I actually really like it. I've had it set up this way for, I think at least three weeks. I've been using it off and on, not every day, but every few days, and it is working great. And I think I'm gonna leave it like this throughout the winter and see how it does. Oh, I'm not gonna leave the entire thing like it is. I still have like alligator clips on here onto the battery, which is totally not cool. I need to, that, that was a total prototype setup just to make sure it was working, so. I'll be doing some crimp connectors on there and get a fuse on there so if somebody kicks it and it tries to short out that it's not going to destroy the battery or anything. But I totally would recommend this to somebody who's concerned about power outages interrupting uh, whatever it is they're, they're smoking on their grill. If somebody is a grilling enthusiast that wants to do that on their grill, then check out my smaller channel, Build 2, where I'll walk through a little, you know, the, the electrical connections are pretty straightforward, but I'll walk through at least what I did. And then uh, I also put behind the scenes content now on Patreon to make sure the patrons are feeling like they're getting a little extra for their money. I'll probably go into more detail on that thermal view of the grill and how I fused that with my day camera at the same time, if you want to see that. So consider becoming a patron of Quint Builds to support this and future projects. Regardless, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.